All right, this video that we're going to be showing today is a really easy one. Hopefully it helps you guys out with a quick solution as to the dilemma that I had. So I recently bought an airbrush, this guy right here, the Ginza model from Japan. And it's a relatively affordable airbrush, uh, not really too expensive. I had some small projects that I wanted to work on with this. And the problem that I had is that the adapter that comes off of here, it's usually sitting here in the box, is this guy right here. And it's a unique fitting, it's a barbed fitting compared to a regular air compressor fitting. And I did not want to purchase a dedicated air compressor for the airbrush. I've got a couple other larger compressors used mainly for automotive purposes, so uh, we just wanted to adapt uh, the larger compressor, like even like a pancake size or even a full size, over to uh, something that could be used with the airbrush. So uh, everything here you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or you know any home improvement store, um, which is nice and it's relatively inexpensive for the other uh, parts. And the nice thing is, is since it's a brick and mortar store, you can test fit, you know, the uh, the items there. So to start, uh, the hose that I used that seemed to be the best fitting, and also had a listed PSI rating on it, is going to be this stuff right here, with it, which is five sixteenth OD and three sixteenth for the inner diameter. Uh, this hose here was was really inexpensive for a whole entire reel of it. Um, won't end up using the whole thing, you know, I'll end up using maybe like a third of it uh, to make whatever hose length that I want. Uh, and from there, you can see how that fit over. I haven't pressed it on fully just yet, that's just a test fit, but it goes on to the end of this barbed fitting. And I'll probably throw a zip tie around the barbed fitting just for a little bit of peace of mind. Next components, so you've got your connection up to the airbrush here. And we can, you know, kind of show that here. This guy is going to screw in, and it's going to look like that, basically, right? Uh, you've got your hose of whichever length that you choose, and then you've got two fittings here. Now, because this is uh, a threaded fitting, uh, what I usually suggest is to run uh, some Teflon tape on it or PTFE tape on it. Uh, this stuff I've used, it's pretty good. It's gray instead of the normal white. Uh, but basically, this fitting, when you unscrew these two, and I'll unscrew it just to show you the two components, this is literally just a super standard and super common air fitting that has a female end rather than the more common male end. And then this adapter here, I'll give you the part number and everything that I used, is just a hose barb adapter that goes from 3 16 to quarter. Um, and that seemed to fit on there uh, very good as well. Uh, again, I've just test fitted this, so I haven't pushed it on all the way, but eventually I'll have the hose going back uh, almost as far as it can go, uh, so it catches on all the barbs. Um, one uh, thing to note, and this is more of a safety thing, so this particular airbrush is rated to, uh, what does it got? It's got a 10 PSI to 45 PSI operating range, uh, if your air compressor can produce more than you know uh, the amount of psi, not just for the air, not just for the uh, uh, airbrush, but also for the hose, which has a 55 psi rating on it at 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you want to, of course, and this is just good general practice for any air compressor use, anyways. Set your regulator before you you go ahead and connect any of your air hoses. This way, you're already operating at below the maximum threshold for the hose, for the tool that you're using, etc. This way, you'll prevent, you know, not only, you know, injury and things of that sort of potential injury, but also from breaking your components, like splitting the hose if there's too much pressure and things of that sort. Um, because, of course, you're always going to be wearing safety goggles and all this other stuff. But even if your your tools break, it's it's an issue. It costs you money. So... Hopefully this quick little five minute video helps you guys out in terms of getting a very simplistic setup uh, for your airbrush to be able to connect to an existing compressor uh, without having to buy a you know specific compressor for the actual uh, uh, airbrush itself. Uh, because if you're like me, you already had a couple compressors, you didn't want to have to buy a third compressor or a fourth compressor. 
um, if you've already got an air supply that's capable of handling this guy. Hope this helps, and uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll uh, try to check on them uh, every so often. Thanks.